I'm watching Zion. And the league is putting... I got more Pelican games on my television than I know what to do with. What does that tell you about Zion? What's it tell you about him? Well, look, obviously the league wants to put him out there and make him the next star. And, and early in the season when they were losing... It was looking bad. I was like, my goodness, every other night the Pelicans are on national TV <laughs> and they're losing. This is this is a horrible decision. But now, of course, he's playing well. And, and what I love, they're putting the ball in his hands. Stan Van Gundy yep. has put the ball in his hands. Now he's running more high pick and roll, almost point guard at times. Not exclusively, which I like, but just enough to throw a different look at the defense. And Zion is playing great, living up to it. Um, I it's how popular is he? You know, he was only sixth, Colin, in the all-star voting in, in front court players in the Western Conference. Now, obviously, you got some great players out West, but I was a little surprised by that because fans aren't the most astute voters. I mean, Yao Ming was voted eight times a starter and over Shaquille O'Neal oftentimes. <laughs> so a lot of times, fan voting is not based on ability. I was surprised that Zion didn't rank a little higher in that regard. And early in the year when they were losing, I actually think there was very a very small amount of buzz around him. Now that they're starting to win eight of their last 15, he's putting up 27 points a game over those last 15. Now the buzz is coming. I tell you, I don't think he's going to do it. But if he would be in the slam dunk contest, Boom. I think that would skyrocket his his fame even more. So uh, it's good because he can be a, a new face of the league coming up. You know, it's interesting. Speaking of new faces, I was wrong on this one. LaMelo Ball is tearing it up. Tearing it up. You surprised? I'm surprised that he's doing it so quickly. You know, everybody knew of his talent. I, I liked him a lot. I thought, he obviously had everything Lonzo had, but more. He's more aggressive, more offensive-minded. He kept his dribble alive a lot longer than Lonzo, which I like. And I, I'm going to credit Michael Jordan and Charlotte Hornets because they didn't force him out there. Obviously, they need a face, right? They need a young star, somebody to, to draw attention to him. And they still started him out on the bench, made him earn his position in the starting lineup. And then when he was ready... They didn't hold him back, so credit to them. But, Colin, over the last month since he's been starting, 20 points, 7 assists, yeah. 6 rebounds, and like 42% shooting from 3. And that's the thing. Nobody thought he could shoot. And here he comes hitting over 40% from 3. He's got the flair. He's a great passer. I'm, I'm glad. Look, I'm glad somebody he's going to be a star because I think LeVar would be insufferable if none of his kids became superstars. So good for all of us that LaMelo looks like the real deal. I thought you, you made a really smart comment and on this. He doesn't pick up his dribble, and that tells you that Lonzo is a little apprehensive about his jumper. So Lonzo's a great dribbler, but he picks it up because he, he's, he, he's a little reticent to shoot a three. LaMelo trusts his own shot, so he doesn't pick that dribble up. He's just going to take it and go score. So LaMelo is a much more aggressive player than Lonzo, and I think a lot of that is because he's a better shooter. Now let's segue to this. We know AD's great, but it is funny now. The Lakers are 7-1 and one when Schroeder and LeBron play and AD doesn't. And I, and I was thinking about this. I don't know if Joy and I were talking about this. One of the little – secrets last year to the Lakers' success is often brittle A.D. got a four-and-a-half-month in-season hiatus. And if I'm the Lakers, I'm sitting there thinking, well, hell, if we have Schroeder in this roster and LeBron, we're a one or two seed. What's the rush to get A.D. back? Let's give him another month and a half off. We know he misses 20% of his games as a pro, Chris. I could make the argument just do what you did last year to a lesser degree. Give him give him eight to ten weeks off. Why not? Yeah, yeah, it's hard to disagree. And I got to be honest, even if Schroeder wasn't playing well and the Lakers were still losing, or if Schroeder wasn't there, say he was hurt still, I still would take that approach with Anthony Davis because the two top priorities for the Lakers are going into the playoffs are LeBron and Anthony Davis as close to full health as possible. Right. That's it. It's not your seed. It's not even 
you want to be playing well, but even if you're not, that's not the priority. It's just have those two close to full health. Last year, they were three and five in the bubble. And remember, they couldn't hit a three-point shot, and they couldn't stop a three-point shot. It was like they people were picking Houston and Portland to beat the Lakers in the playoffs. And But they had those two guys at full health playing near the top of their games, and we know that they won the championship. So I agree with you. I, I would just try, let AD rest. I mean, I wouldn't go too far with it, but I would wait until he's basically 100% healthy and then get ready for the playoffs. I don't care if I fall to a four seed. I don't think they will, but if that was the case, I still would risk it just to be healthy. Yeah. Finally, uh, you know, I, I led my show with this yesterday. I watched the Bucks clippers um, at the end of the game. I watched the second half. And Giannis played very well, but once again, Kawhi and Paul George were not great late. And it's interesting with Kawhi is that in San Antonio and Toronto, the culture was set, and he came in as sort of a mercenary, get a basket, get a stop guy, and it worked. But in Los Angeles, he's more build a culture guy. Well, he's not a, there's two ways to be a leader. You can be a verbal leader. He's not. Or you can be a lead-by-example guy. Well, with load management, he's not always that either. <laughs> Can I, could you say about the Clippers a little bit here? Is, you know, they thought Kawhi's never proven you can build a culture around him. What he's proven is that if the culture is built, he's a great, he's the icing to a really good cake. And that maybe the Clippers, if not delusional, were asking him to do what he's really not as a person or a player. No, look, I, the evidence points to that. I mean, you remember in San Antonio, that was they had the big three still. Tim yeah, Duncan, Manu right. Ginobili, Tony Parker. Kawhi averaged 12 points that regular season. Now, he was the MVP of the finals, but he wasn't a star by any stretch of the imagination. And you said it about Toronto, and let's face it, they don't win that championship, certainly not if Kevin Durant's healthy. I don't even think they win it if Klay Thompson is healthy, but still, give him credit. He's got two rings. But I, I agree with you because he's not a leader. He's not a, a very communicative person. So he's certainly not building a culture in a positive way. And last year we saw he really contributed to building a negative culture yeah. there with the Clippers. I think he's a little better this year, which is good. But I think it's something else too, Colin. There are levels to this. We know this, right? There, there are levels. And every time you reach one level, now the question becomes, okay, can you do it again? Like Luca has established himself as a superstar, right? Yep, yep. But now the question is, okay, can you win? Can you go deep in the playoffs? And then after that, it'll be, can you win a championship? With Kawhi, I think the next level for him to get to is, can you win with the pressure of high expectations? Because San Antonio, he wasn't under any pressure. Toronto, he wasn't under any pressure because it was a one-year rental and nobody expected anything from the Raptors, all right? Now he comes to the Clippers, and now people are saying he's better than LeBron. He's got billboards all over the place. He's got his own shoe deal. It's his city, supposedly, right? And now the pressure of expectations are on him. Credit LeBron James. LeBron has played with these expectations 95% of his career, if not the all entire career. It's different. All guys don't want those expectations of having to win a championship or lead your team to a championship. So I think that's the question, too, with Kawhi. Does he like these expectations? Because, Colin, he has been bad in the clutch these two years in yeah. with the Clippers. Yeah, no. We saw it Sunday against the Bucks. It's been that way all season, and it was that way last year against Denver in the playoffs. Good stuff. Chris Broussard, always appreciate it. Fox Sports NBA analyst. He and Rob Parker, the odd couple. Fox Sports Radio, iHeart Radio, every day. Send it 7 to 10 Eastern. It's got a lot of stick. It's funny, and they're great, a great listen, and I appreciate you stopping by, Chris. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.